Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, just out, just becoming available, probably at your local gun store soon, if it's not already there. Wanted to do a spin-off video so I don't uh, take away from the, the regular flow of a first hundred shooting video, because I want to talk about one of the things that's different about the 2.0 that I have observed... And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. I'm not going to pretend to understand why the design change was made or exactly how it functions differently. But one of the things that is already well noted is the change to the slide stop. So the primary change to the slide stop that we've all noticed and debated, right, is this, this little metal bar that protrudes forward from the slide stop. And just for comparison, here is previous original generation M&P and the slide stop configuration. Of course, there is no such bar protruding there, right? So, I think the operating theory out in the wild at this point in time is that this has been redesigned to prevent the slide slamming home when you insert a, a loaded magazine with a little bit of zest as we've all experienced. Some people like that, some people don't like it, some people don't care. But anyway, the thought is that this has somehow been redesigned to change that behavior in the pistol. Okay, so I've noticed a couple things with this gun. I have yet to shoot this gun, but I've noticed a couple things while kind of examining this part. All right, I just want to share. Notice the actual tab, the actual catch for the slide stop right there in its notch on the slide. Okay, and you can see just underneath the control for the slide stop, we've got a little bit of continuation of this, this bar. There's a bit that projects into there. I'll show you a little bit more of that in a minute. Now let's go back to the original and lock the slide back. And you see the difference in design and now all the M&P people are going, oh yeah, right, that looks familiar. Right, so you have this, this little tab that comes up into the notch in the slide and it locks the slide back. Now notice though too, long, very long and very shallow is that notch in the slide and very small and thin is this tab that actually locks it. Again, for contrast, now the notch and the tab are shaped the same and about the same size. There is no extra play. It's not long and shallow like it was on the previous version. Right. So now let's take a look at the inside. Let's start again with generation one. All right, here is our slide stop on just the frame. So if we rotate around opposite, so we're looking at it from the inside. Okay. Here is the tab that actually rises to lock the slide, just like that. All right. And turn it back around. You see it here as I push up on the control. You see that little tab come up. So that's what locks our slide. Now, the control is, as we're used to on most handguns, that slide stop is a spring-loaded control. And it's the spring tension keeps it down, right? This control basically is designed to fail closed, right? <laughs> so the spring keeps it down and out of the way. So for it to be up in the way and holding the slide back is an abnormal condition for the control. All right, now switching over to the new one. 
All right. So just real quick on that topic, if I lift that up, it stays up. There is no spring tension to, to put that back down. Okay. So it fails open <laughs> instead of failing closed. Okay. So we don't have, we don't have spring tension that wants to close this control and let the slide go. And what this is essentially doing is acting as a friction catch. I mean, again, hyperextend it and bring it into focus here. See the bevel at the top? That bevel at the top, I believe, is designed so that it takes a predetermined amount of friction or pressure, I'm sorry, it takes a predetermined amount of pressure to overcome the friction and push that down. So if I push it down this far, it doesn't want to go down, but if I put a little pressure on it, I can. It's like, again, I'm overcoming, I'm overcoming a latch, if you will, and pushing that down. Okay, now here's another interesting little piece. If we are in the slide locked position, just like we would be when we took the pistol down. Okay, let me go to run this slide back on here. Uh, let's let the camera focus. Alright, when we get to about here, I'll turn it this way so you can see. So we're reassembling our pistol, we're putting the slide back on. And boom, <laughs> we've got interference, let me show you. We have interference right here where that slide stop is definitely going to prevent the slide from going back on. So if you get an MP 2.0, you take it down to lubricate it or clean it, and you meet that resistance, whatever you do, don't just shove harder <laughs> because you're going, to, you're going to damage it. See that right there? So what you have to do in this case to get the slide back on is you have to force that down. And again, there's no spring that's going to pull it down for you. So you have to force that down. And then you're good. And the slide will go right past. Okay, so there we are fully assembled. You can see that tab there just riding along the bottom of the slide. And we can see our notch. Very different. Let me put the other one back. Very different than that. So, generation one, generation two. So, I believe, and I, again, I haven't shot this gun yet. I am planning to do that tomorrow. And I'm planning to get a first hundred video out for you immediately, or as soon as I can. I will try to test this as best I'm able during the shooting to see if it does prevent that that automagic slide forward motion that we're used to with the MMPs. So there's a close-up look at the MMP 2.0 slide stop control. Interesting and definitely a significant change. One of those things that's very small but could be very significant.